In December, the police put a secret camera in Gary Dobson's flat. <laughs> It captured the gang's obsession with violence, and Neil Acourt is repeatedly seen handling and playing with knives. Were you sort of fascinated by knives? No, not at all. Have you got a thing about knives? No. What was Neil doing when he said, put it on something, right, and just go dig straight in deep, watch. He then stabs the arm of your chair. He then says, dug it in right, so all you've got to do is go like that. What is he demonstrating? I don't believe he's demonstrating stabbing someone, but he was, he was stabbing the chair, obviously. And there was nothing meant by it. He was nothing meant by it. No, it didn't mean that we, we, met, we was mean to stab people, we wanted to stab people. Here's an individual who's walking around the flat stabbing things. Wall, chair, and in fact on a number of occasions you're sitting very quietly and he comes right up to you with the knife. <laughs> what did you think he was doing? I knew he was mucking around. No, these things that... Stabbing a chair is one thing, but here Neil Acourt clearly demonstrates how to use a knife on someone's face. Go right in, but if you want to cut someone, just put that bit on their face and go... You're practising cutting someone there, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I think, I think all teenagers go through that phase. I'm not saying to that extreme, because that, whatever, you can put it how you like, but all teenagers do it. But you're almost giving your friend a sort of lesson, an evening class, in how to stab someone. I mean, take it, take you, it. You show him how to penetrate right. in the arm of the armchair, mm. then you show him how to cut the face. Mm. You're giving him a demonstration, mm. a one-to-one -one lesson, mm. in how to use a knife on another person. That's I mean, what you're doing. You can call it a lesson, you can call it what you like. It's just mocking, it's just messing about. Just explain your overarm movement when you're stabbing the wall. Were you just having fun doing yes, that as well? Yes, completely. I mean, do you think that's normal behaviour for a, a 16, 17, 18 year old boy? I think if you used to stick a camera in a room full of teenagers without them knowing and there was knives about, you'd get that behaviour all the time. It's just mocking. That was only what you thought And that absolutely In this scene, the suspects are preparing to go out for the evening in Elton. <laughs> <laughs> Later on in the video, Neil says, let's all get shivved up. What does he mean by that? Shivved up? Uh, I believe that's carrying a knife. You understand that's what it means? I believe it is, yeah. Is it just about Neil Acourt is then seen placing a large knife inside his coat and leaving the flat. 20 minutes later, he returns and puts the knife back on the window ledge. You've just admitted that before mm. the murder of Stephen Lawrence, you carried knives, mm. and your brother has admitted to carrying knives mm. before. Him. Not, not nothing you were just like. Used to carrying knives. No, he, he carried wasn't. knives. If you look at the knives in that video, that was quite a big knife. Nothing, not even similar to the knife I would have carried when I was 16 or 17. So what you did is you got older and bigger. You got bigger knives. No, as things got serious and my life was a threat. You got bigger life. I carried a bigger knife. Different stories of what happened on the night of the murder. The first admission that David Norris may have been in the area. And now, for the first time, an acceptance that at least two of the suspects carried knives before Stephen's murder. In part three, allegations that David Norris's father intimidated witnesses into withholding evidence against the five. And we confront the suspects with their own shocking racism. Your brother says, you rubber-lipped <coughs> I reckon that every nigger should be chopped up, mate, and they should be left with nothing but stumps. What do you expect people to conclude from that? Wait, well, what do you, what do you, it's you, obvious you what they're going to say, say, isn't it? They're going to think he's an animal by saying that, but it, it ain't like that. Welcome back. 
Lawyers acting for Stephen Lawrence's parents have claimed that the murder investigation was hampered by the involvement of David Norris's father, a notorious South London criminal. David Norris himself has never answered those claims until tonight. In this section of interviews, Martin Bashir also questions Norris and the other suspects about their extreme racist views captured on police surveillance video. We must warn you that this next film contains particularly strong and offensive language and views which many people will find repugnant. The day after Stephen Lawrence was murdered, a man walked into Plumstead Police Station and claimed David Norris was responsible. He also said that Norris had stabbed a man named Stacy Benfield a month earlier. Norris was charged with attempted murder. But as the trial approached, David's father Clifford intervened. At the time, he was on the run for drugs trafficking. But Clifford Norris still managed to give Stacy Benfield £2,000 as a bribe. Why do you think he was offered £2,000 to drop the case against you? I don't know, Martin, I don't know. And if I knew him, I would have asked him about this. And I've, I've asked through like, other people like, about the case before. What, what, what was he doing and what stuff like that. And to be honest, yeah, he says he knows nothing of it, nothing of it. Well, Stacey Benfield says that he met your father yeah. around three times and your father said to him, this is how, how I sort out people not by shooting them. Yes, that's what he said, mine, yeah. That's what's in the report and that's what's in his statement. So here's the key witness in a case against you yeah. for attempted murder. He's the one who was stabbed. He receives £2,000 and meets your father <coughs> on three separate occasions in which he recalls your father said to him, this is how I sort people out, not by shooting them. Bit of a coincidence, that, isn't it? It is mine, it is, yeah. But also, I'd like to know why... He I'd like to know why Stacey Benefield for the Stephen Lawrence murder. I'd like to know why Stacey Benefield was paid two thousand pounds by your father. So would I. So would I. Not only was Clifford Norris offering bribes to get his son off an attempted murder charge, he was intimidating witnesses in the Stephen Lawrence murder investigation. The inquiry said that your father, again, had an evil influence on the investigation. He was intimidating witnesses in the case. No, I thought I first of all that mine. First of That's what was said at the inquiry. The police yeah. said that witnesses lived in fear of your family. Mm -hmm. And officers were aware, police officers were aware of threats coming from Clifford Norris, which were discouraging witnesses. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd like to know what a proof of that is, mine. The, the, the man in charge of the police investigation thought your father had schooled you and some of the others not to say anything. Yeah. It's easy to say that because we haven't said nothing in six years. The police eventually arrested Clifford Norris to stop him intimidating witnesses in the Lawrence investigation. He was found with two loaded handguns and an Uzi submachine gun. The police video featured the gang's obsession with knives, but it also captured the shocking depths of their race hate. It's just racist and stuff, uh, is it? Uh, Over the course of three weeks, even the most innocent television advert is sufficient to trigger racist abuse. You're picking out what's going on and you say niggers are having a good time in the sun or the white people are waiting at the bus stop. Yeah. Rather sarcastically. And then you say, all the niggers having a good time at the bar drinking. The fat white bouncer looks like a C-U-N-T. That's racist, that advert. Were you trying to be funny? I suppose so, yeah. It's not very funny. I don't find it funny at all now. I do think it's do rather sick, the jokes. It's do, rather you, do you accept that? Do you accept that these are racist comments? Yes, I do. And that when... The inquiry report came and found that these were gross and revolting racism. That is precisely what these comments are. That's yeah, that's right. You, you there is no other explanation for Do you apologise to black people for saying these sorts of things? If they are offended by my words and actions on that video, then yes, I do apologise. Here, the gang is watching a football match featuring Cameroon. Luke Knight is incensed by the presenter's support for the African team. Contribution to the world leaders. We have infringement that Jerry Francis would have played some fucking or Italy or some like European fucking team. Their first it was Cameroon, a fucking nigger country, fucking presenters saying 
oh yeah, we want Cameroon to win this. Why the fuck should he want niggers to win it when they're playing something fucking like Italy? I mean, it's embarrassing to watch yourself say things like that. That's more than embarrassing. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is. But if you were capable of saying this sort of thing in 94, can you see why people think that you were perfectly capable of hating black people the But the reason why I think I was saying things against black people was because I believe black people ruined my life at the time. Neil Acourt then manages to combine the group's two great obsessions, knives and hatred of black people. <laughs> you brother, <laughs> that's where their form of a few weeks ago has gone. On the surveillance video, you're talking about somebody that you'd not met, and you describe <coughs> this black person as you rubber lipped C U N T. Mm. I reckon, quotes, that every nigger should be chopped up, mate and they should be left with nothing but fucking stumps. Yeah. Well, in you, hang on, you just said yeah. that in general terms, yeah. you are not racist. You're only racist towards people right. who upset you. Mm. Yet here you say, I reckon that every nigger should be yeah. chopped up, mate, and they should be left with nothing but fucking stumps. Right. What are you, what is that but a general racist view? That's banter. That's exactly what it is. Your brother says, you rubber lip <coughs> C-U-N-T. I reckon that every nigger should be chopped up, mate, and they should be left with nothing but fucking stumps. What do you expect people to conclude from that? Wait, well, what do you... What, <laughs> it's you, obvious you what they're going to say, say, isn't it? They're going to think he's an animal by saying that, but it, it ain't like that. Do you know what your brother says about your performance on the video? Or why don't you enlighten me? He says you looked like an animal. Well, that's, that's the truth of it. It looks completely stupid. I'm embarrassed by it. It doesn't look good at all. Now David Norris vents his hatred of black people. If I was going to kill myself, do you know what I'd do? I'd go and kill every black C-U-N-T, every packy, every copper, every mug that I know. I'd go down to Catford and places like that. I'm <coughs> telling you, almost for emphasis, you say, I'm telling you, mm. I'd skin the black C-U-N-T alive, mate. Mm. Torture him, set him mm. alight. I'd blow their two legs and arms off and say, go on, you can swim home now. Yes. What on earth were you At saying? At the beginning of that, Martin, it says, if I was going to kill myself. Now, to me... Talking like that is a sign of a very depressed and disturbed young man. <laughs> Going to kill you, so you don't, no, that, you don't that, say that. What that is, is psychotic like hatred of black people. Yeah. That's what people can think, and they're entitled to their opinion. But I oh, know that's not true, Martin. But it's very difficult. Because if there was to put a camera in my house day in, day out, you would never hear me talk like that again. I've watched the video uh, over mm -hmm. a period of time, yes. and I've seen you say racist comments, mm -hmm. and, I've m and I've seen your friends make racist yes. comments. What you seem to be saying from this is mm -hmm. that if you were going to commit suicide, yes. you'd kill every black person. You'd kill me. That's what well, you're that's saying. What says in there, that's, it, but, that's what you meant, didn't you? Well, that you'd kill a, if you yeah. were going to kill yourself, yeah. you'd kill people like me. Well, at the time, I was. I, am I, I, did, am I, I what did, you'd call a packy? Pardon? Am I what you'd call a packy? Well, some people would call you a packy. Would you? Yes. No, I wouldn't. No. no. But yet you use that phrase here. Yes. You must have meant yeah. that you would. You, you'd call me that, wouldn't you? I'm, I'm what you describe. That's what it boils back down to, as we said earlier. When you're young, you do stupid things, and you're all boys being together. You have a drink. And I ain't being funny, Mike, and I was David, just one second. You say, you say that that's what <coughs> you do when you're young, you're silly. Yes. That was a year after Stephen Lawrence was murdered. Yes. If you're prepared to say that sort of thing, yes. is it not likely that a year earlier, when you're even more immature, it's yeah. possible that you could have been involved in the stabbing of Stephen Lawrence? No, it's not possible, Mike, because I've not been through half as much as what I've been through now.